video we're going to look at the basics of networking and home networking. Now computer networks consist of many different components, uh, technologies and protocols all working together and in this video we look at the fundamentals of how computers communicate on a TCP IP network. Now the tutorial is geared for those who need to learn the basics of how networks work and how the components fit together so that they can set up a small home or office network. Now in order for two computers to talk to each other they need to be connected and you can connect them via a cable or, or wirelessly and this is known as the connection media. They need to have a common language and in networking terms this is called a protocol and they need some form of address. For the connection media, media most networks use a mixture of wired and wireless and now wired networks use UTP unshielded twisted pair and they use Ethernet for the connection protocol and wireless networks they use Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi is based on Ethernet it uses the same frame structure and addressing as Ethernet and I just consider it as Ethernet over, over wireless rather than Ethernet over cable and this diagram here shows a wired Ethernet network now they need a what's called a hub or a switch to talk to each other you don't connect them directly to each other they all connect via a hub or a switch but logically this is the way they look they look like they're connected to a single cable and when Ethernet was designed it was designed with coax cable not UT UTP cable and this is exactly how they were wired in they were all wired onto the same cable so logically it's using a shared media this is the cable is the shared media and if we look at a wireless network it's basically the same this time we have a wireless access point rather than a a switch or a hub but it functions as the same as a as a wired switch or wired hub and usually you find these wireless access points have a Ethernet hub in the back here so if you turn this around you'll see some ports there where you can plug Ethernet into their Ethernet uh, wired Ethernet into there and again logically it looks the same it looks like it's sharing the same uh, cable now Ethernet addressing, now in order to communicate uh, each computer on the network needs to have a unique address. Ethernet has an address or the Ethernet protocol has an address and it's called the MAC address or the Media Access Control address and it's actually built into the network card and if it's wireless it's built into the, the wireless card so they, they use the same address. Now it's also called the physical address as well as the Ethernet address and it's 48 bits long that was the old address the new format is 64 bits long and it's fixed by the manufacturer and it can't normally be changed it's shown as six hexadecimal numbers separated by colons and you can see what it looks like here now links and networks uh, Ethernet is a data link protocol uh, also known as a level 2 protocol on the OSI and the TCP IP networking models and I'll put a link to the article on or tutorial on the website that you can read more about the TCP IP networking model. Now it's possible for computers to talk to each other using just the Ethernet because Ethernet is, is, comes equipped with a, an address and with no networking protocol. However, that's not practical and it's not used. So above the Ethernet protocol or the data link protocol, we have a networking protocol. And it's the networking protocol that allows us to actually construct large networks. And we liken that to streets. Now, a street has houses and houses have numbers. So in Ethernet terms, an Ethernet link is the street. The computers are the houses, which in turn have numbers, which are we talked about Ethernet, MAC addresses, physical addresses. Those are the numbers assigned to the computers. If you've got lots of streets, then we join them together using crossroads, roundabouts, uh, traffic lights, etc., to form a network of streets. Now, the streets themselves have addresses. Now, Ethernet doesn't have an address for the streets, so we need another addressing. Uh, scheme on top of that which is the network layer addressing which comes with the IP protocol. Just as crossroads and traffic lights join and separate streets we have routers on a, a network on a TCP IP network that split the Ethernet links into actual uh, separate networks. Uh, the networking protocol we use on home networks, corporate networks and on the Internet itself is the TCP IP. Uh, networking, networking protocol. It's actually a suite of protocol and if you 
have a look at this tutorial I say I put a link below in the description it explains more about the TCP IP networking layer uh, networking model right should I say now here's a diagram of a typical uh, home network and we have a wireless router which connects to the internet via ADSL fiber or cable and it also connects wirelessly to devices on the home network and also as I said it usually has a Ethernet hub at the back of it which we can connect in wired devices as shown in the diagram. Now each of the devices here has an Ethernet address and each of the devices will also have a network address. So they actually have two addresses, an Ethernet address and a network address or an IP address. Now Ethernet addresses are fixed, they're, they're part of the card, so they're either part of the wireless card here or part of the uh, Ethernet card there. Now IP addresses are logical addresses and they're assigned by an administrator. Um, before we go and look at IP addresses, I want to talk a bit more about Ethernet and explain some important concepts uh, of Ethernet. And what I want to look at is Ethernet broadcasts, broadcast domains and collision domains. Now it's possible to send a, a, net, a message to all computers on a Ethernet network using a broadcast address, which is the MAC address set to all ones, and this is what it looks like here. Now if you're not familiar with hexadecimal numbers then I recommend you take a look at the Understanding Binary Numbers tutorial and I'll put a link to that tutorial, tutorial in the video description below. Now the broadcast domain is the effective range of any broadcast and they're limited by inserting level 3 devices which are routers into the network. Now a broadcast will be re retransmitted by hubs, switches and bridges which are all level 2 devices and also by repeaters. So using these devices we cannot split a network up into separate broadcast domains. We need to have a router to do that. And these levels are the levels in the 7 layer OSO model and there is a, another tutorial on the site about the TCP IP networking model which is based on the OSI model which you may want to take a look at. Now level 1 stands for physical so it is the media, the cable or the wireless and a repeater is a device that operates at that level. Now a level 2 is called the data link and it is Ethernet. Ethernet is a data link protocol and devices at that level are hubs, switches and bridges and a level 3 device is a router and for that we need a networking protocol which is the IP protocol. Now a collision domain is a section of a network where packets can collide and interfere with each other. Now we can use a bridge or a switch which are level 2 devices to create separate collision domains. And so if we've got a bridge or a switch here, we've got computers here and computers here, these computers can actually talk to each other and these computers can talk to each other without affecting the other side of the bridge or the switch. These are their own collision domains. So a packet being sent here on, on this network cannot collide with a packet sent on this network. They're two separate collision domains. But they're one single broadcast domain. So we can actually send a broadcast from this machine to all machines on the network. So this machine, this machine and this machine. Because a bridge operates or a switch operates at level 2 and level 2 devices pass broadcasts. Now bridges and switches don't or aren't affected by the networking protocol that we're using. So uh, the networking protocol agnostic. So we could put IP through there, which we do. We can put IPX through through there which we which we do and we could put any other networking protocol through there that we want it wouldn't make any difference the bridge bridge or switch doesn't process the networking level it stays at le level two uh, most networks will consist of lots of bridges and switches and one or two routers home networks will have several bridges or switches and we'll have a single router connecting off to to the internet now bridges versus switches, uh, they're a very similar function and today you can only buy switches so this is purely academic. When I first started networking you had bridges, switches, you had hubs and now you've basically just got switches, everything's a switch. Bridges were used to join segments together, LAN to LAN, whereas switches were used to connect devices together. They were used in place of, in place of hubs.
And hubs versus switches, now hubs operate at the physical level and they were once the primary mechanism for connecting computers together. Hubs don't create a separate collision domain, they just repeat packets, so they're basically repeaters and they've been replaced completely by switches. And if you look on Amazon and you search for a hub, it will actually be a switch. Now data frames and packets, and data is transferred between computers in data frames or packets. Now the term frame is used for data units at the data link level and the term packet is used for data units at the networking level. Hence we have Ethernet frames and we have IP packets. Now the data frame contains data and frame management information and here's a very simple diagram to illustrate that and it consists of a header and data. Now the concept we use to describe data frame is that of a letter and an envelope and here's another diagram and the letter is effectively the data and the letter is placed inside the envelope and the envelope contains addressing information. And just like the postman reads the addressing information contained on the back of the envelope to know where to deliver the message, then devices on the network, on the internet, read the addressing information contained within the data frames or the IP packets and they know from that, that information where to deliver the, the packet. Now this concept of data being inserted into an envelope is used repeatedly in data communications and it's a very important concept to grasp. Now the envelope containing the data, which is the, the letter, can simply be inserted inside another envelope and you can repeat that process. So you can have letter in envelope, envelope in envelope, envelope in envelope. Now, although the Ethernet protocol on its own is actually sufficient to get data between two nodes on an Ethernet network, it's not used on its own. Ethernet is what's known as a data link protocol. And for networking, we need a networking protocol, which is IP, the Internet protocol. And again, the IP protocol is not used on, on its own. It's not used in isolation. It's actually part of a protocol suite, which we call TCP IP. Now, the IP protocol contains the important IP addresses and it's the IP addresses which are used to route the packets across the uh, network. Now the diagra diagram below shows or tries to illustrate how data is placed inside protocol envelopes and here on the sending side we place the data inside an IP envelope or a header and we place that inside the Ethernet envelope or header and then we get to the other side and we unpack it in reverse order out of the Ethernet envelope we take the IP envelope and out of the IP envelope we take the data. Now every device attached to your home network has an IP address uh, but what exactly is an IP address and why is it needed? Well the IP address is the most important address as far as we're concerned. It's a logical address means it's assigned by us and it can also be changed. Now, current networks use IP version 4 addresses, IP version 6 addresses are being introduced, but unlikely to impact um, small offices, homes for a number of years to come. Now, the IP4 address is a 32 bit address and is written in dotted decimal notation, and they look like this 192.168.0.1. Now, the address has four components. Uh, each separated by a dot, so a dot, b dot, c dot, d dot, which we just saw with that example IP address. Now, uh, for home and small office networks, it isn't really important to understand the different uh, IP address classes or the technicalities of subnetting. IP addresses on home networks and most networks are auto-assigned anyway. Now, when troubleshooting network problems, you need to be able to identify network addresses and you need to understand if your device has one and whether that address is valid. Now, because small home office networks use a device called a NAT router, your internet router is a, a NAT router, the IP address used on almost all no home networks and small office networks is non-routable. And IP addresses starting with 192 are an example of non-routable addresses. There are also other non-routable addresses which can, can be used, but 192 tends to be the default. The IP address on your home network is auto assigned by a DHCP server, which is part of the NAT router, so part of your internet router. Now, problems arise when the clients are unable to get an IP address from the DHCP server because maybe it's down or you've got network problems, and in which case the IP address will be actually auto assigned by, by the actual machine itself and from reserve range of 196.254.0.1 well, 
to 169.254 or it might simply have an IP address of 000. Now it depends on what version of Windows you're using as to what IP address you'll get. But in either case it's not going to work correctly because clients with a 192 address are effectively on a different network to clients with a 168 dot address even though they might be sitting physically right next to each other and connected to the same uh, internet router. And if you go back to our earlier street analogy, effectively the two clients think they're on different streets. If you want to find your IP address on a Windows computer, you can use the IP config command. Uh, you use that from the DOS prompt or the command line. And you just type IP config or IP config slash all, and you'll see something like this here. And you can see here, there's my IP address, 1.3. Uh, there's my subnet and there's my default gateway. Now the default gateway is actually the IP address of the internet router. Gateway is an old term and it's still in common usage. It should be default router, but it's still called default gateway. Now IP addresses, MAC addresses and RP, RP. Now to send an IP packet to a network device, the sender needs to know the IP address of the destination device. Now the IP address will then be used to get the data packet to the final network segment that actually the IP address is used to actually route the, the packet. Now in order to deliver the packet to the final destination, it needs to know the MAC address. Now a protocol called RPRP, Address Resolution Protocol, is used and it, what it does, it broadcasts an Ethernet query on the local network and it basically says which node has this IP address. So it gives it the IP address and asks the nodes to respond. Now, the node with that IP address will respond and say, that's my IP address and by the way, this is my MAC address. So then it knows the MAC address of the destination IP address and it can send the packet direct to the, to the machine. As it says there, all nodes actually see the query, but only the node with the destination IP address actually responds to that query. Now, IP networks, uh, computers and other devices are grouped actually into networks, and that's the purpose of the, the IP address. And in the real world, this is the same as houses being grouped together into, into streets. Now, each network has a unique network number, just like a street has a, a street address, a street name and they will be the same for all computers and devices on that network. Now to separate devices into different networks you need a router. So a switch doesn't do it, a hub doesn't do it, a, a bridge doesn't do it, you need a router. Now on home and small office networks there's only one router present and that's usually the internet gateway router, the NAT router that connects your network off to the internet. And all computers on that home network will have the same network number. Now the network number is actually part of the IP address, so the IP address you can actually split it into two. One is a network part or network component, the other is a node component. So when you look at the network IP address, sorry, when you look at the IP address, you have to be able to differentiate it between a network, the network and the and the node. And that's the job of the subnet mask. It splits the IP address into network components and node components. But for my network, it has the address my computer has this address 192.168.1.69 with a subnet mask of 255, 255, 255 and 0. To find the network address we just logical add this with this and basically the network component comes out as 192.168.1 and the node component comes out at 69. Now that's all I actually want to say about IP addresses. I've got a couple of other videos on IP addresses uh, explaining them in more detail and going into subnetting in more detail. And I'll put uh, links in the video description below. If you prefer reading or would like to just read, uh, read about this, then the tutorial is actually on the site here. And again, I'll put a link in the video description below. And other than that, that's the end of the video. So if you like to comment on the video then leave them in the comment box below if you like the video then use the like uh, button below and if you want to know when i publish new videos then you can always subscribe to the channel until next time goodbye